What's up from Pitch It is back in season 9 and this will be the first time we can actually run it in Ultra League. So today I'll be showcasing a Pitch It team in the Ultra League Remix. Actually, though, the team I'm currently running definitely would work fine in the Open Ultra League as well if you prefer that. Team I'm running, Pidget, Stunfisk and Shadow Machamp. A very simple team, but Stunfisk and Shadow Machamp just cover uh, Pidget's main weaknesses really, really well. Its main weaknesses being other steel types, which Machamp deals really well with and Stunfisk does fine against as well. Electric types, which Stunfisk just walls and ice types, which Stunfisk is very good against and Machamp is pretty okay against those as well. So yeah, overall, a uh, pretty damn uh, solid squad. And man, Pidget put in a lot of work. Put in a lot of work. Uh, this thing is, is really, really good. Even after the Feather Dance nerf, it's still very, very strong. You know, Brave Bird just hits everything very, very hard. And Feather Dance, just debuffing your opponent's attack two stages, is really, really nice. I ended up going 10 and 5 with this team uh, against, like, veteran rank players around that elo. So that's at the moment, that's pretty, pretty good. So yeah, some excited, exciting matches coming up. As you can see, I am uh, Shadow Machamp is supposed to be on my team, and I'm running Ludicolo in this first battle. Uh, all these battles were actually done on my Twitch live stream, and I have like a redemption on my channel where my uh, if, if you have enough channel points, you can like force me to play Ludicolo. So that was what I was doing at this battle, and it really ends up working out for me because imagine if I had Machamp in the back there against that Zilvion, that would not have been great. Alright, they still have a Needle Queen with some health though. Luckily, I have my Stunfisk ready. I knew there was just some poison uh, thing, so I didn't have to shoot it. And I have an Earthquake. This should knock out the Nido. And with a shield up, I think Lucoro is gonna dance his way to victory, right? One bubble, two bubble, three bubble, bye bye. Sylveon. Very nice. Alright, next game, bring the actual team. I have a uh, Scavalier lead, which is really, really good. In comes Drapion, which I actually saw a lot of. I saw a lot of these today. And man. They are so freaking spammy. I, I, I'm definitely going to try to work on an XL Drapey on myself. The Scorpy spawns are not too bad these days. So I'm going to try to get myself one, you know, for maybe the next time Ultra. Uh, but yeah, this thing does actually get the two crunches versus Stunfisk, which is pretty crazy. Honestly, I probably could have farmed more there, but uh, this is all right. I can get one Earthquake off on the, on the Escavalier. It can't really hit Pidget. So I think I'm really fine here. Gonna go for the Earthquake. Does a good chunk. Does, does a really, really good chunk. Bring in Pidget uh, to farm it down. Uh, Megahorn will hurt, but the rest is all like a resistible. Megahorn's also resisted, but it's a very strong move coming from a very attack weighted Pokemon. So here comes your Gouge though. This was looking very good until this thing came out because this is a really, really good Machamp answer. But you're gonna see the power of Feather Dance right here, which they don't even shield. That could have been a freaking brave bird that they 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 made the right call they called the feather dance which does no damage uh, and now they're debuffed and now their dragon tails really aren't doing that much and shadow machamp is shadow machamp and even though the counters are resisted and do a lot zaka tail because their attack is double debuffed did nothing as well like that is really the power i don't throw my cross shop until the final moment right there i decide to throw in a cmp tie because i wanted this regalogy to remain switch locked for as long as possible uh, because in at this stage their attack is lowered. I didn't want them to be able to switch out early. All right, in comes Escavalier. I'm able to farm it down, throw a rock slide, which honestly might have been a mistake uh, because I don't get to the Feather Dance anyway. I only need like I only need to throw fast moves at this point. Hopefully we can gust it down. Oh man, that was very 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 close. GG there there. All right, Nido Queen leads pretty good. In comes a uh, uh, Numbrian, which is really good for me. Uh, I'll bring in my Machamp. This is actually a close matchup, uh, especially if they have Psychic. Psychic wouldn't knock me out, so I don't shield it. But luckily, it's, it is a last resort. At this point, I'll throw one cross shop right here. I think at this range, I still survive one last resort. So if they throw, I will just take it. I don't want to go shields down. The Needle Queen is still a bit of an issue. Because if it shields up against Stunfisk, I just lose there. And it's not amazing versus Pidgeot as well. Let's so go for a Rock Slide straight away. Because it is the harder hitting move, uh, especially against, well, well, not especially against, if, if, if like both Cross Shop and uh, Rock Slide are either resisted or, or both neutral, uh, Rock Slide does like slightly more. It's only like a tiny bit because it's not, not stab and it's not the strongest move anymore after a nerf. Still does slightly more. It comes a Mew though, which is really nice that I hit the Rock Slide on that. 
uh, a shield of the wild charge. Go for the brave bird against the Nidoqueen now, which does so much damage. And people don't expect you to throw brave birds. And that's the that's the fun thing with uh, Pitcher, to be honest. There's a lot of mind games. There's a lot of mind games which can make it pretty uh, well difficult to play and frustrating to play because if you uh, if they shoot your brave bird, it's almost over. If they no shoot your feather dance, it can be quite bad. But yeah, it also makes it quite fun. Anyway, Mew coming out again. I'm just going to throw rock slides here. At this point, I'll just let Stunfish go down. And Pidgeot will probably be able to gust it down, right? Are they going to throw a move? They throw right on CMP. Great timing by my opponent there. Just going to let this go. And then Pidgeot should be able to just farm it down. Maybe use one shield. But probably won't even have to. Oh, well. There's a the move. I'll definitely shield it up. Even if it's a surf. I want to shield this up. Because it's not going to get two moves. They go for the wild charge. Which basically their only win condition. So... A good attempt by my opponent there. Alright, in comes Magnezone. That's the most horrible lead you can have. Because we're champ. Basically the most horrible switching you can have. One of the hardest, if not the hardest, uh, Stuntfisk answer. Uh, well, Magnezone is one of the hardest, if not the hardest, Pidgeot answers. Because they do uh, double resist all your moves. Earthquake really does hurt my champ though. They can go for another cross up right here. For some reason though, they decide to try to farm me down. And I get to another uh, Rock Slide. So this is actually pretty good for me. Because I'm shields up. And maybe they don't have a good Shadow Machamp answer in the back. That's what I'm hoping. It's gonna get, let this Rock Slide go down. And to shield, Shadow Machamp will have to do this for me. There they go. I'll bring in Machamp immediately into the Magna Zone. And they bring in a Gengar. These, uh, this was basically the, the hardest counter line I could have seen, I think. Because, uh, uh, well, I don't think there's like a harder counter to Machamp and Gengar. However, a Rock Slide would really hurt. Would really, really hurt. It doesn't knock out from this range though. Which is why I'm building up to a payback. I'm building up to potential payback. I'm going for the cross shot bait. Uh, to hopefully get off another rock slide. Because also I need some... I couldn't double rock slide. Because if I double rock slide. Even if the rock slide knocks out from that range. I need energy to be able to get to the move before uh, Magnezone. So yeah. I go for another bait. Which I do shield. I go for the rock slide. Uh, this time which will definitely knock out. But you're going to see the Magnezone have a, has a good amount of energy. And... Uh, yeah, I won't be able to take it out. So it's, uh, it's a great game right there. But uh, unfortunately, I got a really, really hard counter right there. But cool team by them. Like, it's uh, all non-XL. Maybe uh, maybe something you could, should consider if you're looking for a cheap team. Uh, what was it again? Magnezone, Machamp, Gengar. I think that's a pretty solid squad. So, uh, well played by them both right there. Good team. All right, next game. Gengar lead. That's really, really good for me. Because I do resist the Shadow Claws. Of course... And, well, Sludge would hurt, which I am assuming they are throwing right here. But it only does, like, 55%. So it's all right. It comes Typhlosion. It's going to go for the Feather Dance right there, hoping to get a shield. And if I do, that'd be really, really nice. If I don't, that's fine as well. I can just switch or just throw another move. But they do shoot it up. going to shoot it up last one right there. I'm going to go straight for the Brave Bird after this. Because that would knock out this Typhlosion. And if they double shoot, that's fine too because then i can just come in either stunfisk or my champ and uh just kill him uh but uh, they do let it go and this is really good for me now it comes gengar again though and they might be able to farm me down here which you barely do it's a really nice play however i do know at this point that they don't have shadow ball so i don't really have to shoot this because it's just a shadow punch we well we only saw sludge but it's you can assume it's always shadow punch it comes from a champ this is not great because i am at, at an energy disadvantage at this point and I will have to shoot up this cross shop. If I get this I'm a champ low enough though, where a rock slide would knock out, that is great. Thing is though, this is a non-shadow machamp. So we are doing less counter damage to each other. Which means I probably won't be able to, to counter this down into a range where a rock slide will knock out. And looking at this, this is not a range where a rock slide would knock out. So I'm definitely gonna have to throw the earthquake. But they're gonna be able to get to a cross shop before I get to the earthquake. Also, they're like denying everything, but I don't think it really matters. Uh, and this puts me in a range where another Shadow Punch will knock me out. So if they have a Shadow Punch loaded, that will definitely knock me out. But hopefully they don't, and I can much shot down. Let's see. They have one ready, and it was really nicely played by my opponent right there. That a horrible lead. They had a horrible lead, uh, but they came back from it, from it. So very well played by them. All right, another Magnezone lead. Going to Stunfisk right away. They're staying in. They're staying in, which is interesting. But they throw a mirror shot, I think hoping to get the attack drop. And they bring in Gyarados with Dragon Tail. And also, they didn't get the attack drop. So that's nice. I go for the Rock Slide. I'm thinking at this point, if this is their best counter to Stunfisk, 
it's just gonna go off. And well, I don't think they were prepared for Stunfisk. It is kind of crazy that Stunfisk is allowed in Remix, to be honest. It is kind of crazy because it, it's honestly the most busted Pokemon in the game. Uh, so maybe this was just an oversight by them. All right, anyway, Stout in lead, which is insane. We catch a Wild Charge as well, so it's a really good start for me. Stout Lawn would have definitely, like, basically almost... Well, the Wild Charge would not have one-shot Pidgeot in Ultra, but it would have done a lot. Uh, so I decided to catch it on, uh, on Stunfisk, which we do. In comes my champ. It's going to go for the Earthquake right there, right here, which wouldn't knock out, but it would do a bunch of damage. Uh, enough uh, to put it in a range where Pidgeot can farm down before they get to a Rock Slide. They still have the Stout left. Uh, and something in the back. I don't know what. So far, though, this team is incredibly spicy. Here comes the Stout. And again, I think I could have overfarmed by one more Gust. Uh, but it's fine. I'm just going to go straight for the Brave Bird and a No Shield. Like I said, it's all about the mind games. Sometimes just going for the Brave Bird is the way to go. And it's really the way to go. Uh, because often, they're expecting Feather Dance and they won't shield. Alright, Seraptor, not the best. And also, incredibly spicy. I love to see it. I have a Straptor for Ultradic as well, and I love using it sometimes. Uh, but it is incredibly glassy, and it only has nukes moves, so, nuke moves, so uh, the champ was able to just clean it up. GG right there, I drift him lead. This is pretty good. I resist the fast moves. August is really ending up. Icy went definitely super effective though, but doesn't do that much. Again, Feather Dance is probably the expected move right here. So I'm gonna do the, the Brave Bird, which is also a pretty risky play, to be honest. I think he... You definitely win this matchup just straight Feather Dance. And if they shielded that Brave Bird up right there, I would have been in an issue. I would have been in an issue in a pickle. I would have been... I would have had an issue, you know? I would have had a, an issue because um, I have my champ, so I can't really switch out. And then I'm debuffed, debuffed and the next Ice Wind knocks me out. So not the greatest. But luckily, the no-shielded. The Ring and Drapion. I bring in Stun Fisk. Uh, this is an Aqua Tail Drapion, so this is not amazing. I'm going to go for the Earthquake, which unfortunately they shield. I think if they double shoot Earthquakes right here, they might be able to force a shield with the Aqua Tails, because this one wouldn't knock out, but the next one would. I'm currently in an Earthquake, though. So if I just throw this immediately, they shouldn't be in another Aqua Tail, but unfortunately, I overtap, because I tapped my charge move a bit too early. I should have been a bit more patient uh, and undertap the charge move, but now I got a shield, and I go for the Earthquake again. If they shield this, I might be in a bit of trouble, but then my champ uh, is a shield up versus the back line, which is always pretty good. In comes a Politoed. And this is pretty iffy, but I should be fine. Let's go for the Earthquake right here. Right here. Um, just do a bunch of, of damage to it. This does really hurt Politoed. I'll bring in my Pidgeot right here. Just to burn his energy. And once uh, they, they, get, they get rid of their energy, I think my champ should be able to sweep in the back. Even though the Driflim is still alive, and it's, I think, one hex of an Icy Wind, uh, I, I should be able to knock it out uh, maybe before they get it, or, or close to when they get it. Or close, like, after they get it. So it, it won't be able to get to the Shadow Ball, which is fine. They go for the Weather Ball. That's okay. In comes Drifflim. Barely not able to take it out, though. I should have this Icy Wind, which I think is a misplay. Probably should have no shield that, because it would do less than a Weather Ball. And this Politoed might be able to get to a um, Earthquake now. Also, I go for the Cross Shop right there, which is another misplay. Should have just tried to counter down. At this point, though, I was thinking, you know, I'll just make it fancy. I'll catch this, uh, I'll catch this Weather Ball. And at this point, you know, it's game over. They even tried to undercharge right there, which is a really nice move to farm me down, but they know it's over. They concede, and it's a great game right there. All right, Pidgeot lead. This is actually versus uh, Jonkus, the one and only Jonkus, and he's also running a Pidgeot, a shiny Pidgeot, and I got lucky at the start. Uh, he desynced a little, little bit, so I'm a couple turns ahead, uh, which basically denied him his gust right here, which is very unfortunate, but I take good advantage for, uh, uh, of it by going straight for the Feather Dance. However, he does deny my gust right here, so at this point we're even, we have the same amount of gusts, uh, and then no shoot this. Because I, even if he Brave Birded, I was expecting to lift that and be able to get to another Feather Dance, but I, I don't, this, which is unfortunate. Which is very unfortunate. Uh, I bring my Stunfisk versus that Pidgeot, uh, with the intent of taking this Feather Dance and then swapping into my champ, uh, but uh, they switch into their own Machamp. And at this point, I'm not feeling great about this, because if they switch in, a really insanely hard counter to my stun fisk into my stun fisk as I'm a champ. They probably have another stun fisk answer in the back. So this is not looking great, especially since uh, Jonkus does have a, an energy advantage right here. Uh, he will be able to burn both of my shields. CMP ties me with me right there. Unfortunately, I do lose CMP because my Machamp is, uh, well, pretty high attack. Well, no, not pretty, pretty low attack, actually, pretty high, pretty high stat product. Um, I go for another cross shop. If, it, another if it's another stun fisk in the back, I'll probably be fine here. But if it's a Politoed, uh, which it is, uh, this is not looking too great for me. Uh, we had the same lead, but his, his back line definitely kind of hard countered mine. 
Uh, but we might be still be able to come back from this. You know, uh, Stunfisk is insanely, insanely strong. So I might be able to do this. Uh, we will see. We will see. I actually wait with throw my earthquake right here uh, until I see they're in the middle of the Mertrold animation because I don't want them to catch on my Pidgeot. And at this point, I need another another earthquake here. I think the only way I win this is if they switch to Pidgeot and allow me farm. Uh, but he's actually gonna do something really smart right here. He throws three Mertrolds, or actually he already had one over, so he, he currently needs only one more uh, Mertrold for uh, the Weather Ball, and I only need two more Mertrolds for my earthquake. Uh, which means I won't reach it. I think I should have really considered undercharging against the Pidgeot and then getting two more Mud Shots in. That was the only win con. Would have been incredibly hard, but it's the only win con. Uh, but anyway, uh, we didn't do it, uh, so we didn't win. Uh, great game by Junkers right there. All right, Ferrothorn lead is actually really, really good. Just staying in, which is crazy, actually. It's pretty wild because, well, this is pretty bad, especially if they have a Mirror Shot, which they do. Uh, so I'm expecting something weak to Pidgeot in the back, so I really want to save my Pidgeot. I'm just going to go for the Brave Bird right there. Now for this, I will uh, switch out into my uh, Galarian Stunfisk, actually. Which, uh, if you if, just wait until the end, you're going to see uh, this probably was a mistake. Uh, but anyway, this is still fine. I'll take both of these power whips. He's not switching immediately, which also is kind of scary. Uh, however, he does bring his Mendibus right now, which is pretty good. Which is actually really good. Gonna go for a Rock Slide right here. Uh, however, a Mandibus is not that bad for a Stunfisk. Like, it can tank three Rock Slides uh, at, at full health. I need four to knock out, basically. At this point, the Dark Pulse would knock me out. If they have Foul Play, though, uh, this is a little uh, better for me. Because I get another uh, Rock Slide up, off, which would be a really, really good chip. Which I go for right here. If they, if they don't even have to shoot this up, it would bring in a red though, but they do shoot it up, which is actually kind of painful. I know, I know that uh, there's likely something weak to pitch it in the back, and probably something strong to Machamp in the back. I come in and pitch it anyway, which might be a mistake. Uh, and, and the reason I come in and pitch it is because I don't want Machamp to take the Aerial Oasis. I would have needed to probably double shield to take out this, uh, this Mandibus right here, which I don't want. Uh, so instead, I just go for the Brave Bird right here to take out the Mandy, and I just hope that Machamp can counter down whatever's in the pack. Uh, I've seen that uh, line before with Ferrothorn, Mandibuzz, and Machamp, so I was hoping it was that, but it's a freaking Dragalge in the back. Uh, so this is really bad. Again, we've seen this before. This thing counters Machamp quite hard, uh, if it's not debuffed. Earlier in, the, in this video, uh, the Dragalge was debuffed, and it was kind of fine, uh, but now, uh, no, this is not great. I go for the Rock Slide. Maybe I should have gone for a cross shot, but in the end, uh, I don't think it really mattered. I'm gonna have to get to the Brave Bird here either way. The only way I win this. So I think if they switch to Ferrothorn right now and allow me to farm down, but instead uh, they get to another Aqua Tail. So it's uh, a great game uh, by my opponent right there. Well played by them. All right. I think we have one more game after this. Yeah, this should be the final game. Toxcroak lead. Really good. They're bringing in Polyrath though, which is really interesting. They're very weak, very weak uh, to pitch it uh, in the lead. Uh, apparently. I'm gonna shoot this up though. Don't want to take this Ice Punch. It would hurt me a uh, good bit. Gonna go for the Feather Dance. If they shoot this, this is really good. If they no-shoot this, I can just farm down. Uh, well, they no-shoot this, which is really nice. I'll farm up a little more and I'll go into my Machamp. Machamp, kind of useless. Kind of useless against Toxicroak. Because, uh, you know, Toxicroak just resists everything I can throw. So I'm just gonna sacrifice, his, sacrifice it to this Polyrath. Gonna take both of these moves, and if I can chip down the Toxic Toxicroak just a tad, that'd be quite nice. I I am gonna try something risky here, well, risky-ish here. I'm gonna try to go for the double crush top uh, and try to deny his move, but of course, uh, I don't. I should've really gone for the Rockstar there. It's a safer play, it does slightly more damage, but I want to play risky and try to go for the double crush top. Couldn't reach it, unfortunately, but, you know, that's how the game is intended to work, uh, so it's fine, uh, but they also, they do deny my guest right there, which is uh, Alright, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, in comes Umbreon. At this point, this is not amazing, actually. This is not amazing, because Umbreon uh, does pretty well against Stunfisk. Uh, especially since they have a shield and they can decide to shield up my Earthquakes. This is not amazing. They also have Toxicroak left, which can get some farm on my Stunfisk. And a Sludge Bomb will definitely hurt uh, my Pidgeot as well. So this is still going to be quite close. They throw another move uh, right here. Which, of course, I have to take. I have no shields. 
I throw at two Merchults, which is bad timing. I think I overtap right there. If you're up again, if you were at Stun Fisk against Umbrian, you always want to try to throw your move after either one Merchult or four Merchults or seven. Uh, because then you throw at the end of their uh, fast of animation and you don't give him any uh, extra uh, turns. In comes Stroke Shark again, which I will Earthquake. They shoot it up, unfortunately. At this point, I just gotta farm this down at Pidgeot, though, and hopefully. I can get to a move first to Umbreon. I don't think they have any energy charged up, so I think I should be fine, but it's still gonna be quite close. Farm down Tox Croak. Go for the Feather Dance, and this will knock out the Umbreon. That's a great game. As you could see, Pidgeot put in work all of these games. Definitely a Pokemon I would recommend you uh, to build. Paired with Shadow Machamp, a pretty cheap option there. And then the third, I think Galarian Stunfisk worked really well. You could do, also do Politoed there, which is where Junkus ran. Or maybe consider something like a double fighter or like Swampert would work there as well, I guess. So there's a lot of options with Pidgeot. Consider trying it out. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.